Hey guys, this is Alex from MarketWise Asia and I am back from Japan, Tokyo. So I landed in Singapore just a few days ago. So I was away with my family uh, for a vacation in Japan, Tokyo. So it was a pretty uh, nice trip. So the highlight of the trip was actually at Disneyland, Tokyo. So it was a pretty fun trip for my family and for my five-year-old daughter, especially it was a pretty a fun trip okay and the weather was uh very cooling also in fact the autumn this year came a bit late it's only during the uh, last few days before i flew back to singapore then the weather started to turn really really cold so when i was in disneyland at the start of uh the month over here uh, at the 6 and 7 of november okay the weather was actually you not know, hovering about 15 degree to 20 plus degrees celsius okay and then towards the end of the trip, I think uh, last few days, right, uh, the weather suddenly plunged to about the kind of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, okay? Anyway, okay, I'm back from the trip. I'm just going to share with you the uh, market. And today, you know, uh, as I'm doing this video, right, you can see on the screen, it is actually the 17th of uh, November, okay, 2023. It is a Friday afternoon, 2.30. 2.20 p.m. as I'm doing this uh, video. So, you know, I can't do the usual uh, live stream tonight because, you know, uh, I'll be away for the Philip CFD Client Appreciation Night. Okay, together with Jay actually also. Okay, so I can't do the uh, usual Facebook Live. That's why I'm going to do this uh, quick update uh, to you guys. Okay, so the highlight of today's video is that I'm going to focus, okay, I'm going to show you a view why I'm going to um, focus on the TLT, which is, is the long-term treasury bonds over here so without further ado okay let's uh kick start this session okay as usual uh, a disclaimer first okay all right actually this is actually what i i mentioned uh before i flew okay so as usual disclaimer first whatever i share in this uh, video is just for education and information purpose not a recommendation right to tell you what to buy or what to sell so as usual uh, please follow me on the various social media uh, platform over here if you're watching this on youtube you should be able to find this uh, social media channels okay in the description box of the youtube video if you're watching this on facebook you should be able to see it on the first comment of the uh, facebook post over here all right so let's kick start this okay so let me share with you uh the calendar first okay calendar first okay so of course you know this week uh, I think the main news is actually the CPI, which is the inflation data over here. So on Tuesday, November 14 over here, uh, the CPI year on year, right, is actually much better than anticipated or forecast, okay? So previous was 3.7. The forecast number was actually 3.3%, but the number came in slightly better than 3.3. It was 3.2. And the uh, market, you know, just uh, flew, okay? And the market just flew, okay? So, um, yeah, and... Heading into this coming new week, right? All right. So from the November 20th onwards, right? So the key, not many news over here, but the main one will be during a Wednesday and Friday. So Wednesday, there will be the FOMC uh, meetings over here. And then there will be unemployment uh, claims as well. And then there's this uh, manufacturing PMI as well. So do take note of uh, these uh, dates also. Okay. And... The, let's check out the options expiry over here. So for, yeah, so November, okay, in fact, to 9, 17 is, is the options expiry date over here. Okay, so uh, generally, as I mentioned previously, right, if the market really do climb, it is generally before the options expiry, okay? Uh, based on historical data, generally, okay, not always, generally, okay, a lot of times you can see that after the OPEX option expiry, there, there might be some weakness. So if there is weakness in the coming uh, week, okay, from the 20th to 24th, I'll be not surprised, okay, but, you know, we shall see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, just to let you know, today, 17th of November, it is the standard options uh, expiry date for equities in this indices uh etf as well all right so and let's kick start to the 
index over here. So, so, so I actually flew to Japan on the 6th of November. Okay, 6th of November. So let me put a date on where I flew. Okay, so this is November 6th. This is the day where I, uh, I, I flew to Japan over here. And, you know, prior to that, I, the market was actually, not actually, it's, it's very, very good. <laughs> the market was very good. So before I flew, I actually exited um, a lot of my position because I don't want to keep so many open position while I was overseas. Okay, so I had a very good trading week. Okay, so at that point in time, I mentioned that you know there could be a turning point over here due to due to my um proprietary uh, potential reversal signal over here, and then uh market consolidated. Okay, for a few days, and then this uh, CPI data on Tuesday. Okay, the market you know just gone crazy. The bulls just gone crazy, and then shot up, and then for the past uh. Two days or so, the market is actually consolidating. All right. So once again, if you ask me, you know, if you are trading the indices like S and P or uh, Nasdaq, okay, uh, the small cap Russell two thousand, if you are just trading the indices index itself, okay, I think the upside, okay, is it, not much. Okay, uh, the risk reward is not there. Of course, the market can continue to go higher, but your risk in increases. That's there could come a time where the market just suddenly, you know, just turned down. Okay. Uh, of course, if, if you are trading individual stocks, there are still opportunities down there. You just need to know where to find. And of course, uh, for my seasonal vantage insiders, okay, before I flew, I actually mentioned about one stock. Okay. So I'll talk about that uh, later on. All right. So if you're talking about the key support and resistance, okay, for this coming week or next week, okay, I will just add in the usual uh, pivot point indicator over here this is the uh pivot point okay so for the s and p 500 uh futures over here right so this is the s and p 500 futures you can see we are nearly approaching the r2 resistance line over here okay so can you see over guys here that there is also a wash and rinse pattern over here okay so when the market you know, when people are turning bullish, seeing that this could be a resistance level over here. If you can see, I put a naked chart over here. You can see that this is the typical support and resistance uh, area over here, right? Okay, so this was the prior swing high. So this is the resistance level. So people are expecting that oh, this could be a time where people are going to go short. You know, once they go short, okay, uh, this is, uh, you no know, price actually, uh, close below the prior day low over here and then rebounded there's a wash and wins better and market continue to flow higher uh, this is a trap huh? <laughs> you can see over here so when the market is really trending well it is not advisable you know, for you to go short you can just you know just don't trade just stay at the sideline and wait for opportunities you know to go along again all right so for the index the next resistance level, it is actually at about 4560. Okay, for the SP futures, uh, 4560. This is the ES over here, 4560, which is at the R2 level over here. For the NASDAQ 100 futures, okay, this is also at the R2. We are already hitting the R2 uh, level over here, which is at about uh, 16,025. Okay, 16,025, over here. And for the Russell 2000, mm, didn't hit the typical pivot point resistance, okay, but we are coming back down to the R1 resistance turn support area again. All right, but one thing I want you to take note is that, okay, from what I see from the price action, I think, I, can, I think I'm not confirmed, <laughs> But I think okay, there could be uh, a, a little bit more upside to go just based on the broad indices. Okay, reason is very simple. Okay, reason is very simple. For those who have been following me, you should know that I don't like to see <laughs> uh, the shooting star pin bar hammer candlestick pattern. Not. So this is a very typical example of a shooting star pattern. If you are on Twitter or X, right, you realize that okay. In fact, a lot of those uh, traders or gurus, they are many of them are actually still very bearish 
in the market on the market itself they said oh this is just a relief rally the market is con you continue to sell off very soon in the near future so this is exactly uh, what i want to hear so and not only that okay i think the market has more upside to go because based on the the continuation of the bearish sentiment when price action is firmly saying that you know we are in an uptrend so i don't know the reason why they are still so bearish okay it could be some macro factors or whatever it is anyway anyway back to the topic of the candlestick pattern so this is the you know a, a shooting star pattern over here all right or you can say it's a graveyard doji or a doji whatever it is okay i am not so uh or fixated on the naming of the candle but to me this is a pin bar and there's a long shadow over here which means that you know there are a lot of traders out there who are especially those who are bearish right uh will tend to short the market and they'll you know once price break the low over here they'll short it okay and when a lot of times when such pattern it is so obvious okay i think the market will reverse back up and hunt the high again at least this is what i see okay and for the s p 500 that is a very uh, small pin bar over here okay where price has broken below the low over here already and i think that the market can still continue to go higher a little bit okay to test the high over here uh, because i think the market is out you know, to trap those uh short sellers who went short uh two days ago for the nasdaq it is the same as well this pin bar over here which i think which suppose i think you trap a lot of people to go short okay and then i think the market is going to trap them again to go a little bit higher whether the market can go a, a lot higher i i do not know okay we still have to uh check it out and see but all in all i feel that if you are just trading the stock index i think the upside uh you know it is uh not a lot because you know as i mentioned right during my previous live stream you know the reversal stock signal you should long here long here long here or long here <laughs> and you should be the now should be the time to take profit already now shouldn't be the time to be aggressively going long okay what i call the tunnel pile lah. i think a lot of you know that already huh? if you go long here can still go up a little bit higher but you know the upside it is not really there already huh? so i i am keep emphasizing on this huh? because i want you to get it okay the risk reward it is not there even though the market can still go a lot higher okay but i'm not so uh so keen to go long on the indices right now but i, I believe that the market can still go a little bit higher at least to catch uh the the high of this pin bar over here okay can and one thing to add also is this uh from ryan the trick okay you can follow him on twitter or x this is someone i really respect okay he has a lot of quantitative uh, data over here a lot of things i share is also from him as well so this is the i think one of the latest uh chart that he showed okay this is the um s p 500 first year of a new president in pre-election year so this year is the pre-election year and biden is the new president over here so can you see that this orange line over here it is the average uh, of what the market will do okay third year of a new president can you see over here all right so the green line is actually the year this year year 2023 so the data uh, span from 1950 to currently right now so it is more than 70 years or 73 years of data to be exact of course you know i don't expect the market to go exactly like the orange line. i can see that the market when tends to overshoot over here back to the mean over here when the market you know overshoot to the downside you know over uh all in all you come back to the mean over here right and then catch up again to the mean over here and once again when the market overshoot over here you come back to the mean over here when the market overshoot to the downside you come back to the mean over here okay so which brings me to the question over here will the market do like what is say average for the past 17 years will the market have a a, a kind of a, a correction or a sell off until mid until towards the end of the december or mid of november starting from now you can see over this uh brown line there's a some a downside move over here but it doesn't mean that the market has to exactly follow you know the past seasonal data over here okay the market can also overshoot over here Okay, and then come back down to the mean okay what i'm just trying to say that you know based on what the data is here okay uh you know we can expect the market to go up higher towards the end of the year into december but what i'm trying to say that do not expect the market to follow exactly like the brown line over here we still have to follow the price action okay so can see as i mentioned right you no know, over uh extended back to the mean over as tended to the downside 
back to the mean over external to the upside back to the mean over external to the downside back to the mean so the market can also ex external to the downside or external to the upside and then back to the mean again something like that all right so this one just want to try and tell you that personally i do believe that we might see okay the market continue to move uh, higher into the uh, year end uh, uh, don't ask me how the market is going to fare for you know, next year or so okay i'm more of a swing to position trader I just capture what I see right now into the into the next few weeks also and happy enough to take profit and trade. <laughs> okay, can I? So right now, uh, just back to the treasury bonds. Okay, so if you have been following my my videos, okay, before I flew to Japan, in fact, I think one or two weeks before I flew to Japan, right, I mentioned about this uh, TLT. Okay, this is the ETF. The 20 plus year treasury bonds over here. I mentioned, I think, uh, uh, for two Facebook Live already, okay, for the period, this is a bullish, uh, bullish seasonals over here. Uh, all right, so from the 14th of November to 28th of uh, November, for the past 20 years, 95% of the time it closed higher during this period which means that out of the past 20 years 19 years it ended higher from 14th of november to 28th of november which is actually right now right now right now am i ready to say that so you know of course you know the actual market it is the zb the treasury bonds 30 years treasury bonds futures over here so this is what the uh, market look like so the TLT is a proxy. This is a 20 plus year treasury bonds. The price movement is very similar to the 30 year plus treasury bonds over here. And you can see that, you know, previously uh, what I mentioned is that, you know, don't go against uh, uh, the trend over here. All right. So I mentioned, I think just before I fly, I mentioned that, hey, the market before I fly is actually on the 6th of November, right? So I said, that, hey, the market was actually Friday is here. Friday, it is over here. Okay, I mentioned that you know, you know, right now this is the first time uh the TLT it is above the central pivot range over here. So for the past many, many months, okay, the bonds market is actually heading down, which means that the EU is actually heading higher. Or uh, the bonds and the EU are inversely correlated. Okay, so I was looking said that hey, you know, maybe we are we could look for price to have a pullback over here, then in the mid of November, this is where the favorable. Uh, period it is upon us which i mentioned over here 14 of november to the end of the month that kind of period okay so the market actually did not have a very uh, uh pu good pullback over here the, the market did not actually come down a lot in fact it, it was in a consolidation ranging period over here okay and then you realize that there is also a, a wash and rinse pattern over here you can see that this is the day the 9th of november over here where the closing price close okay, below the prior day low over here. Okay, all right. So on this day, uh, the market on the 14th of November, the market actually closed above the wash line uh, over here. So, you know, this is the wash and miss pattern over here. For just to have a disclaimer first, all right, I actually entered TLT on Wednesday, Wednesday over here. Okay, that's two days ago when the market open okay i entered into uh, tlt and if you realize that there's also a wash and rinse pattern once again so yesterday okay price uh close lower than the prior day low over here okay can you see over here so it's not exact but you, you get the idea over here so yesterday price also stayed above the uh, wash line over here okay so which i believe that you know there could be a more upside to go based on trigger okay there is a trigger for me to enter based on setup there's a time setup for me to enter as well so this is a bullish period also okay and uh of course you can, might say that hey this is only until the end of the month but if you look into further period right in fact for the treasury bonds until uh december or so the market is also generally bullish or favorable for the tlt to the upside Okay, and this is also in line with the uh, equities market as well. So the the prior you no know, narrative where the market was actually coming down 
for the S&P 500 over here, right? Okay, wow, it's coming down over here. Okay, the reason they, they state is actually because, you know, the EU is actually going up. It's, it's causing pressure to the equities market. So if you take a look at the, this is the TNX. TNX this is the 10 years uh, EU over here where a lot of, uh, you know, analysts will focus on this 10 year EU over here. So this is the reason why, okay, I keep going higher, okay, and because that is causing the uh, downside equity move, all right, okay. And when the yield start to roll over to the downside, which means that the bonds market will start to uh, reverse back up to the upside, and then that will relieve the pressure on the stock market as well. So that's the reason why I can see that recently, you know, once the yield start coming down, the S M P five hundred or generally the market will start to move up, you know, are, are higher again. Okay, so that's the reason why I am actually looking on to the uh, treasury bonds. So as I mentioned, right, you know, in terms of, you know, looking at the indices, I'm not so keen, okay, to buy on the index, or the equities index, you know, when, you know, there's no opportunity in the uh, stock index, okay, I will focus on other asset classes, which I think that the bonds, okay, might, might be a relatively, you know, good uh, things to trade also. Again, this is just my opinion. It doesn't mean that, you know, the price can go higher. The market can still go lower like that. Okay, you still need to have a stop loss in place. Okay, uh, yeah. So just a disclaimer: I have a position in TLT Treasury bonds. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Personal opinion doesn't mean that I'm right. Huh? Okay, can and also want to let you guys know that you know actually before I flew to Japan, okay, to Tokyo during the period over here so this is the blue vertical line was actually where before i flew okay so market has has been up for some days already so in fact i told my seasonal vantage insiders hey you know uh you know i market has been going up you know a lot of stock has been going up a lot as well you know not many uh stocks have the trigger you know the wash energy trigger that i want to see because typically for wash energy trigger there need to have some pullback some correction but a lot of uh, many stocks been going up already <laughs> so might not have so many stocks to go long okay so one thing i shared before i fly is, is actually this stock just a case study over here so can you see over here right this is the uh, weekly video that i sent to them for the insiders yes it is it's on 6 november this is on 6 november just before i fly so i i specifically mentioned about this you know stock to them said hey you know maybe you can consider taking a look at the uh, LMAT, uh, the Metro Vascular, this is a healthcare and equipment supplies stock over here. Actually, I have no idea what, what it does, but it is, it is a small cap. And from the period from 7 November to 20th November, 90% you know, of the time, okay, it is up okay, uh, during this 10-year uh, period. So this is the uh, LMAT. Okay, so and another one that I mentioned, it is that, you know, I said, hey, you know, based on what I see, okay, uh, this was the central pivot range. You can see that it's just before I fly. Uh, okay, this was the central pivot range over here. You know, market has a re reject rejection over here, but it, it, it seems that the market cannot go down lower and there was a wash and rinse pattern over here. So I suggested to them that, hey, you know, uh, there are a few ways they can do. Either is when the market open, you go buy because price is already above the uh, wash line over here on Friday. Okay, or you can wait for when the market, you know, after opening for at least one hour, then you'll see how the market move, then you buy. So there's two options, either you buy when the market opens or after one hour, then you'll see how the market move and then you consider buying that kind of thing. So I actually have a position in LMAT. So I set a limit order, okay, before I fly to Japan. So when I reach Japan, I really realize it's really executed already. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is before the market move. You can see that LMAT right now it is doing pretty well over here can you see that over here this was the this was the the price action just before i fly over here so i entered on this date over here so it takes some time to for the for it to work out so can you see that while the market was you know not so bullish for the small cap russell 2000 yesterday you know it went up 1.59 percent so in fact i'm ready to take profit anytime now uh, okay, so I'm ready to take profit anytime now. So my risk to reward is more than one already. So you can see that this is also based on the 
seasonal advantage data you know, that I have. Okay, all right. So all these are not in hindsight. I actually said in advance. So again, for the uh, TLT over here, I actually said uh, in advance. Okay, before the market actually moved, I said it already said a lot of times. Okay, not say a lot of times. Uh, two times a day. Maybe you consider looking at the treasury bonds. You can consider looking at the treasury bonds during this period. And now is the favorable time. Again, I could be wrong, but based on seasonals and based on price action trigger, I think you know there could be uh, more upside to go. But of course, I don't expect you know maybe price you know do not uh, go go like this. You know, go bombastic. You know, rock, rocket up like, you know, there could be so some consolidation range or so. Uh, give it some time. Give it some time for 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 it to work out. So I think I hope you get some insights from uh today's video. If you really like this video, okay. The insights that I share today, do like the Facebook uh like, also do like and subscribe to the YouTube uh channel as well. Give me some comments, you know, on the YouTube channel, okay, on the YouTube page over here, over here. Let me know that you enjoy uh this video, and I hope you guys have a very good weekend ahead. And I will see you guys again next week. Okay, thanks so much. Have a good weekend ahead. Bye bye.